a man is walking inside the narrow walls, curious to know what's ahead in the hidden room. He soon finds a weird painting, and just as he looks to the other side, he witnesses something so horrifying that it makes him run off, disturbed to his core. Let's see what was inside that hidden room. The film opens with Nemo's voice talking about his childhood, where he preferred his sketchbook over everything else, emphasizing that art is for keeps while everything else is temporary. Nemo has broken into a luxurious penthouse apartment in New York to steal expensive artwork. He has the help of his companions, number two and number three, who communicate with him through the radio. The owner has apparently gone to Kazakhstan for a long time. After collecting all the important paintings, he tries to find the most expensive painting, the self-portrait, to no avail. He then decides to exit as number three gives him the activation code for the door. But the security system malfunctions, shutting down the entire house and trapping Nemo inside. Nemo tries his best to get out, but fails, and his companions leave him alone to fend for himself. He manages to turn off the alarm and then tries to chip off the wood on the security door in hopes to open it. Soon enough, he ends up finding that it has a metal door inside. To make things worse, the malfunction creates immense fluctuations in the temperature, which causes it to rapidly rise, making the apartment heat quickly. He also learns that there is no water supply, food, or gas inside the apartment. Despite being so luxurious, the owner has not kept good care of the apartment, as even with high-tech facilities, there are no essentials inside the house. There are just a few leftovers along with alcohol, which Nemo feeds on to stay alive. He keeps calling out to his companions through the radio, but no one answers back. Nemo manages to use the leftover supplies to survive and finds that even the TV doesn't have channels to watch. He then derives distraction through the live CCTV footage from inside the building. The next day, Nemo hears a helicopter outside and rushes to it in hopes that his companions have sent help, but he quickly gets disappointed that it was not for him. The increasing temperature keeps making things worse for him, and all the technology around the house appears useless. There is no water to even flush. Nemo still looks around the entire house in hopes of finding something useful. He finds some rotten oranges that have become like rocks, and then uses them to break the window, and fails. He then notices the skylight with glass panels and devises a plan to break the glass in hopes to escape. He starts collecting all the furniture around the house and secures them with ropes and curtains to create a ladder that would help him reach the skylight. With increasing temperature and dehydration, Nemo attempts to drink the water from the small pond inside the house as well as the fish tank, but then gets disgusted. He then finds the automated sprinkler that has also dried. The condition is so bad that he is not even able to flush. He eats all the ice cubes from the fridge, savoring the cold in the burning up apartment. He continues to innovatively use all the supplies he could find around the house to build a ladder. In the meantime, he sketches different things around the house. His attention is captured by a housekeeper named Jasmine having her lunch on the stairs. While opening a can of dog food, Nemo gets injured and uses his t-shirt to bandage the wounds. He desperately goes to eat the leftover ice from the fridge and breaks down from the helplessness. Later, he manages to open the locked pantry and finds more dog food and meat along with some pasta and seasonings. Just then, he hears the sound of automated sprinklers. He rushes to drink the water and lies down in the blissful heaven of wet soil. This gives him some energy to continue building the ladder and Nemo finally manages to reach the skylight. He is disappointed to find out that the glass is too hard to break and gets back down again. He continues to make sketches now of all the people around the building. 
He soon notices that Jasmine has arrived outside the door to clean the hallways. Nemo rushes to the door and starts screaming for help, but Jasmine cannot hear him because of the music blasting in her ears, as well as the thickness of the door, and leaves after cleaning up. Suddenly, the system fluctuates again and the temperature starts to drop rapidly. This relieves Nemo a bit and he continues the cycle of sketching, and now he collects the water from the sprinklers to drink. He seemingly enjoys his time inside the house, even dancing to the warning song coming from the fridge, which irritated him earlier. While looking around the house, he notices a glass vase and gets inspired to create makeshift protective eyeglasses. He wears it to chip off the layer of frame around the glass panel. Nemo seems to be losing his mind as he talks to himself like he is a show host who is cooking for television. With no fire, Nemo eats the water-soaked pasta with seasoning that he found and derives entertainment by watching people on security cameras. He can soon chip off the frame, only to find out that the glass is supported with screws. The temperature keeps decreasing to freezing cold, and Nemo even cuts the wire connected to the system monitor that operates the temperature. But it doesn't affect the rapid decrease in the temperature. He removes the cemented frame from the skyline to reveal all the screws and then goes back to spend time watching people on camera. Time passes and he starts talking to the pigeon standing outside, asking it to go find help for him. He continues to destroy the pictures inside the house and then forcefully opens the suit closet. Inside the closet, he finds a hidden room with narrow walls. Upon going further in, Nemo finds the self-portrait that he was looking for earlier. He walks some more and gets disturbed at the sight of something horrifying and runs off. He pauses and walks back inside to find a body lying on a table with a book in his hand. Upon closer inspection, he discovers that it's just a dummy. He throws off the dummy and reads the script that talks about heaven and hell. Following this, Nemo starts becoming more and more deranged. Jasmine comes outside the door again, this time with no earphones, but fails to hear Nemo's cries for help. Nemo starts having weird dreams of attending the owner's art gallery with a sense of disgust and anger in his eyes. He even sees all the people that he has been watching through the security camera. Soon, Nemo returns to work and uses wooden pieces to mimic a tool to unscrew the bolts in the glass panel. After some failed attempts, the screws start to loosen up. In the meantime, he takes out the fish from the fish tank, and just like that, he needs to survive. He starts to lose his mind further as he continues talking to himself and makes some disturbing images on the wall and even thinks that Jasmine looked right at him while she looked towards the camera. He even collects everything that he has used to get out of there and creates some kind of structure, which looks like a god in front of the sketch that he has drawn, and then begins to worship it in some weird voices. This poor man has lost it. He finally manages to remove all the screws, but unfortunately he loses his balance and falls down the makeshift ladder structure. He gets a massive cut on the leg and presumably fractures it. That night, he has weird hallucinations of Jasmine getting closer to him as the loneliness starts to seep in. The following day, he gives his broken watch to the god that he created. The worst hallucination takes place when he tries to treat his wound that is the result of lack of nutrition and hygiene. And he sees the owner standing behind him. The owner attacks him on the wash basin and Nemo falls unconscious. Nemo later wakes up with a bloody nose and as he lies there, he notices the smoke alarm on the ceiling. He then decides to use it to draw attention to the apartment. So he creates a fire using the magnifying lens and some torn up pages. He succeeds in setting off the smoke alarm which activates the sprinkler system all over the house but no one gets alarmed enough to open the door as Nemo keeps screaming for help. The water floods everything and Nemo loses his only form of distraction, which was the security TV footage. 
After a while, it is seen to be snowing outside in the city, and the temperature has come down in the house as well. Yet Nemo lies there on the sofa, immersed in the book that he found in the hidden room. He starts to collect more of his defeats and recites the words from the book over and over again. I am going to heaven on a hillside, with his broken voice. He then writes his goodbye letter to the owner on one of the walls of the apartment, which includes the same narration from the beginning of the film. When he was a kid, his teacher asked what are the three things he would save from his house if it were on fire. He answered his sketchbook, his ACDC album, and his cat Groucho, instead of his family like other kids did. He adds that his cat died and he lent his album to some friend who never gave it back. But he still has his sketchbook as art is for keeps while everything else fades away. He apologizes for destroying the house that was a cage for him and emphasizes that there is no creation without destruction. He also remarks that he has managed to save the last three important paintings that he was going to steal. He finally climbs up the makeshift ladder structure again, singing the same lines from the book. And the film ends as a huge glass panel falls on the floor. So what do you think about this one? What would you do if you were entrapped inside a house like this? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, please click on the next video or playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.